Hello chess lovers, this is International Master Vitaly Neymar from PowerfulChess.com. Today I would like to show you one of my best games which illustrates the power of the Sicilian Khan variation. Now this game I was playing black against Grandmaster Dennis Boris in 2012. White played his move to e pawn to e4. I applied with c5. The Sicilian defense. Knight f3. e6. Of course, here black has many other options such as the hedgehog and the dragon and the knight of. But I played the e6. Pawn to d4. C takes d4. Knight takes d4. And now I played pawn to a6. Now, the idea of the Khan defense is it uh, gives black a very flexible structure in which it can go to into a hedgehog by playing d6, or maybe black can still develop his knight to c6, or even pawn to b5 and bishop to b7. So, black, white played the main line, bishop to d3. I played bishop to c5, attacking the knight. The knight needs to go back, attacking my bishop. And now the bishop has two options, either going to a7, or, as I did in the game, bishop to e7. Both options are pretty common. And now bishop a7 leaves the bishop on a more aggressive square. However, it weakens the d6 square. So in the game I played bishop to e7. And now white played knight to c3. Looks like a normal developing move. However, this was a slight inaccuracy. As white usually supposed to play queen to g4 which attacks the g7 pawn and now it forces black to play g6 now the defending with a bishop is probably won't be good enough because of moves such as f4 and e5 attacking this bishop so after g6 we can see that black is weakening his dark squares which is the most common move for white. However, in the game white played just knight c3. I played d6, castle, knight f6, pawn to f4, knight bd7, defending from the e5 threat, queen to f3, queen to c7, bishop d2, and now the idea for black is to start some attack also on the queen side, which I did with the move b5. White played rook a to e1, and now I played bishop to b7. So here we have arrived into a typical hedgehog structure where black developed his bishop to b7, pretty strong bishop. This bishop is usually, the dark square bishop is usually staying on e7 to defend the d6 pawn and the king side. And the knights are on f6 usually, and this knight is sometimes on d7 or on c6. In this case, I decided to put the knight on d7 to not to block this bishop. And the queen is on c7 to defend the e5 square. And sometimes to support the c5 square and maybe even a possible long castle. White played king to h1 and now I had a choice between the irregular move castle after which white could continue queen to h3 have its, having some hidden threats on the h7 pawn maybe e5 next move and maybe some sacrifices for, on the defending knight. But after h6, the position is supposed to be 
with the equal. In the game, I took a slight risk and played b4, attacking the knight, waiting with my castle. Knight went to d1, and now I played a5, just gaining space on the queen side. Now white cannot advance the e5 pawn because of this pin. In case he advances the f5 pawn, he creates a weakness on e5, which will allow my knight to jump on e5. Now this knight will be very strong on e5. So I play the correct move, queen to h3, putting some pressure on the h7 square, and getting the queen away from this pin. So I had to play g6. A bit weakening the king, but defending against this threat. The idea behind g6 is also if white plays f5 now, black has an interesting idea of taking the g pawn, pawn takes, and then pawn goes to e5. And this is actually a better position for black, because here, after rook to g8, next move, attacking the g2 pawn, and black can also play d5, having very strong central pawns, and the king can simply escape to the queen side. So, that was kind of my idea. However, white played correctly, e5. Knight to d5, where I played knight to d4, and now it is very dangerous to castle because of some sacrifices on the e6. So I had to wait, instead, I played queen to c5, knight went back. I went queen to b6, knight to e3, and only now I I felt safe enough to castle. Well, I played knight to g4, looking into an attack on the king side. Now the better move was actually knight to c4, forking the queen and the d6 pawn, as well as the a5 pawn. So forks are pretty powerful, remember that. Instead, white played knight to g4, and I just continued my attack with a4. Knight h6 check, but my king just went to h8. Now white had to retreat his knight to c1, and I put my knight on c5. So clearly my central knights are probably better than those knights. So I played bishop to c4, and as I usually say, I would like to finish my development, and I saw that my a8 rook is not doing a lot, so I put it on c8, just in case that the c file will be open one day. White played knight to d3, knight to d3, c takes d3, now I played queen to c6, creating some threats on the a8 h1 diagonal. White played rook to c1. Now I wasn't sure how to play, so I played king to g7. The idea be behind this move is that maybe the queen one day will move and will leave the knight hanging. I played pawn to d4. Well, now the pawn is undefended, so I played queen to b6. And now white tried to mate me. He played f5. But I did not panic and just took the pawn. Knight takes. And pawn takes. Here, white, white took on f5 with the queen. Now if white would 
check on h6. The king can simply go back, bishop takes, rook takes, and now if he takes, white sacrifices two pieces for a rook. So I have a knight and a bishop versus a rook, which is usually better. So instead, why just took on f5 immediately? And now I played a great move, rook takes c4. I was looking what was the best, one of the best pieces of white. And I saw that there is a threat. Actually, white wants to take and attack my knight. So I sacked my rook. Rook takes c4. And now I took on e5. Pawn takes e5. And now my king is obviously exposed, so I have to defend it. Back to cover. King to h8. And preparing the strong move, rook to g8. Attacking the g2. So white played bishop to g5. Trying to exchange pieces. I just took. Queen takes. But unfortunately it put the queen on a bad square with the rook. Which what I did in the game. And now. The game is pretty much lost for white. White tried to retreat with queen to d2. And now the final blow. Knight to e3. A powerful fork. Actually, if it would be an option, black would probably not take the, one of the rooks. But the most strongest threat in this position would be bishop takes g2 or rook takes g2. So in the game, white tried to counter attack with rook takes before. But I just played queen c6 adding more pressure on the g2 pawn. If I play rook to f3, but that does not help. I just took queen to takes f3. And here white design due to if the pawn takes on f3, this would end probably pretty badly for white. This is lost, and so many other threats are coming. Well, here it is. This was one of my best games at the Sicilian Khan. So, what have we learned? Number one, the flexible Sicilian Khan variation is a tricky weapon for black. Number two, during the game, try to find opponent's best pieces and exchange them even for the price of a sacrifice. And number three, use forks to gain material advantage and win the game. Thank you very much for joining me today. This was International Master Vitaly Neymar. For more videos, please visit PowerfulChess.com.